Welcome to the real world. It sucks, but you're gonna love it. For those of you who've watched the American sitcom Friends, these words are said by Monica Geller. They mean that the real world may not be what you expect it to be. It may suck, but ultimately, in the end, you will learn to love it. Good afternoon. My name is Emma and I'm in ninth grade at White Oak Secondary School. Today, I would like to address a concept that people have been taught to fear, failure. When researching about the word failure online, the definition states that failure is a lack of success. But failure is not the lack of success, nor is it the opposite of success. The misconception happens quite often. Failure is actually a part of success. A CNN Health article states that people are only born with two fears. One, the fear of loud noises, and two, the fear of falling. People are not born with the fear of failure, yet we have found it within ourselves to treat failure as a fear when it is inevitable. When you have to get up in front of your class or just in front of an audience to present something, the feeling of your heart rate getting quicker and quicker just the thought of you having to present. Then when the person before you finishes or the teacher calls your name, the feeling of dread and the rush of adrenaline that kicks in like winds right before an upcoming tornado because you know you're next. You know you have to get up onto a stage or in front of your class where you are so hopelessly out of your comfort zone that every little mistake you make feels like being washed away by forces far too large for you to influence. When, in reality, the mistake you may have made may not have been that noticeable. But our minds have to think of the worst. Failure is a term used by the lay people incredibly often. We hear it all the time, so what does it mean exactly? Well, we all have barriers and boundaries in life, from the smallest hurdles on the racetrack to the great big mountains we must climb and the significant canvas we must cross. The mentality is the same, although the problem we are trying to conquer in context may differ. Let's start by talking about the nature of failure from a biological point of view. The scientific term for the fear of failure is atrophobia. Fear starts in the brain. The hypothalamus in the brain reacts when someone encounters something that makes them afraid. The brain then releases chemicals to the sympathetic nervous system, which then sends out signals to release stress hormones to try and bring things like the adrenaline down. This causes people to become tense. In terms of the fear of failure, a lot of it is actually imagined. If you could think of one thing you would like to do right now, anything, what would it be? Perhaps getting your dream job, getting into your dream school, buying your dream house, buying your dream car, maybe it's an activity, such as bungee jumping or skydiving. Now think of everything that could go wrong. In a job interview, you may stumble on your words because of nervousness and not get your dream job. You may fall short on your grades and feel as if there is no way possible you can get into your dream school. Your mind may draw the conclusions of death or major injury when you think of budget jumping or skydiving and very few people actually encounter those kinds of experiences. No matter how small the possibility, the imagined scenarios in our mind will be treated as if they are the reality for the majority of people. The visual cortex in the brain was thought to be the only region responsible for powering imagination, but it's not. In a scientific study, scientists found that when asked to imagine imaginary shapes, 12 different regions of the participants' minds were activated. This leads cognitive scientists to believe that the imagination is actually a result of a neural network, like your nervous system. From these facts, we see that since the fear of failure mostly comes from the imagination, and the imagination works the brain, fear also works the brain, so it's almost as if the brain is using imaginations that trigger fear. The fear of failure overworks the brain. Do you notice how easy it is to think of things that could go wrong when experiencing change or making a decision? Well, we all fear that the outcome of our decisions will result in failure, but with that failure comes something else. Shame. We feel shame when we don't achieve things. We feel as though everyone is shaming us, even if they're not. So where does this shame come from? Well, in our society, we have an image of perfection. This image is what we all strive to be in one way or another, but it is important to realize that perfection doesn't exist, only progress. And the reason why perfection doesn't exist is because of the limitations it causes. Perfection seems like the limit to everything. Once you get to perfection, you can't get any better or go any higher. But the truth is you can always be better. That's why the world records are constantly being broken. Perfectionism is the desire for excellence. Not only that, but also the fear of failure. Because when one wants to be perfect, one certainly does not want to fail. But our minds have to think of the worst possible outcome for every decision we make or action we take and convince us that that outcome is exactly what will happen. Using the example of going out for your dream job, there is a possibility that you may stumble on your words because of nervousness in an interview and not get the job. 
and your mind will convince you that that is exactly what will happen, therefore making you rethink going out for the opportunity in the first place and perhaps dismissing the idea entirely. But everyone will fail at some point in their lives, so if failure is inevitable, then why does perfection exist? The real sad thing about society is that we all search for perfect things. We think we want how our perfect lives are inside our head while knowing that nothing and nobody will ever be perfect. So ways to get rid of the thought of perfection in your head is to learn to let go. Because you aren't your pain, you aren't your past, and you aren't your mistakes. Once you learn to let go, you'll be able to reach out and create a much better life for yourself. The second solution is to build confidence. Know that even if you do fail, even if you aren't perfect, you'll still be fine. And most importantly, you're not alone. As a student athlete, failure comes easily to me. And when I fail, there's only one thing I want to do. Quit. Quitting or the lack of persistence is the first barrier of success that I would like to talk about today. Persistence means practice, consistency, and continuing, no matter how hard it may be or how hard it may get. The best examples of having persistence occurs in the world of sports. Kobe Bryant was an NBA superstar. He was the player to make the second greatest amount of baskets in one game in NBA history, only second to Will Chamberlain. But something that people may not know is that Kobe is also the player to miss the most shots in NBA history. Kobe had to push past the limits of a person's physical capabilities, sometimes missing a shot on the court, but nevertheless still pulling through and becoming one of the greatest basketball players of all time. The next reason for failure that I would like to explore is the lack of discipline or conviction. Sometimes people fail because they lack the confidence or mindset to even just try. Henry Ford once said, and you've probably heard whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. If you think you can't, you've already accepted that you will not succeed. I am not the best at English. This year, I was incredibly disappointed with my English midterm mark, and I remember opening the email at around 7 a.m. in the morning, heart pounding and head throbbing from just having woken up. I opened the email, and my heart just dropped. I must have sat there for maybe 30 minutes, rereading my teacher's comments over and over again and refreshing the screen as if the numbers on the screen would just change but they didn't. That was when I made a promise to myself. I told myself that I will work hard to bring my English grade up. But in order for that to work, you must believe that you can, and most importantly, you will do it. There is a huge difference between having full belief and having partial belief. This brings me to the third and final reason for failure, rationalization. Out of the things people have become so good at doing throughout the years, making excuses will always be extremely close to number one. The assignment isn't worth that much anyway. I can do it tomorrow. I'll start on Monday because that makes more sense. And most importantly, it's not my fault. He started it. We make excuses that we think we feel better, but we don't because we are neglecting our own responsibility. When you start rationalizing with yourself, you convince yourself that whatever you are trying to do or accomplish can wait and is not that important, even if you know that that is not the case. Even more so, rationalization often leads to procrastination which the majority of us fall victim to, including myself, especially when it comes to schoolwork. All these barriers of success have solutions, and I would like to introduce two of them that I personally use. Looking at the big picture is extremely helpful. As a student, especially in the stressful years of high school, I do this a lot to keep my grades up. Whenever I feel as though studying is too difficult and I want to give up, I remember what I'm working for, whether it be, again, your dream house, your dream car, or just your dream life in general. By thinking about what you want to do in the future and your dreams, you're motivating yourself to make that dream a reality. I look into my future and I see that in 10, 20, or even 30 years, I will be grateful that I worked this hard in high school. The second solution is a little old school, but it does work. It's journaling. Now, a lot of people think that journaling can be boring and a waste of time, but it is truly not. For example, you can truly make the journal your own. If you don't like writing, you can always use online platforms such as Google Docs, Slides, and the one I personally use, my personal favorite, Notion. A journal is personal to the person it belongs to, but I would like to suggest you add two things to yours, to be and to feel. By deciding who you wanna be and how you wanna feel at the beginning of your day, you are already starting your day off on the right note. When learning all about the different barriers of success and how to overcome them, people also learn some valuable lessons that failure has to teach. 
Failure builds strength and character. When you learn to discipline yourself, have conviction and have persistence, you elevate yourself both mentally and physically in order to prepare for obstacles in the near future because nothing teaches someone as well as experience. The power of failure is that once you've learned not to be afraid of it, you take more risk, knowing that even if you do fail, there will always be something good that comes out of it. There is nothing strong about a person who has never fallen. All around us, we tell stories of those who have risen up from nothing. Stories of legends who defy all odds pushed up against them and manage to succeed despite being born into a world that seems to be built to make them fall. Heroes who show us how to work past our pains and who move mountains with their bare hands, fight gods and monsters because they have failed. And that has made them stronger. Besides, the one who falls and gets up is stronger than the one who never fell. Thank you.